So this is one of uh, my favorite parts of my craft room, which is our great big table. I think it's about seven feet by six feet, something like that. And it's made, as you can probably see down below, by a whole bunch, I forget how many are on there, Calyx units, um, four by fours. Um, and I think some four, let's say four by four, and then two by two. So four by four, four by two, kind of put all together. Um, and then it's got on, it's on caster wheels. And then there's a piece of plywood, just a cheap piece of plywood on top. And then a piece of pe plexiglass cut to fit on top of that. Haven't decided if we want to paint the plywood to make it look a little bit more interesting and kind of go with the room. But for right now, it's just plain. Now what I have done is... I think we do have two calyx units that are like somewhere in the middle that are white. So we put all the black ones on the outside. And then of course I had to decorate the drawers with my crafty creators. And they continue on the other side. Now I do have to share this table with my husband. This side is mine. So we have these little doors. Now all of these is this is all of my um friend this is like music paper down there is children's books maps and blank pages that's all of my magazines this is a really really old magazine or uh, newspaper sort of magazine -ish newspaper <laughs> here in germany and then they continue on inside of the doors so I think, I forget what this one is, but I think it's, yeah, and so they're both full. I think this one's flowers and stuff, and so everything is under there. And we have two sets of chairs, two that are really tall, so that you can sit up really high and look down, and then two that are a little bit lower, so you can sit a little bit lower and kind of relax at the table. And just some bowls in the middle for catch-all. Unfortunately, the lighting in this room is pretty terrible still, um, but yeah, so we have this light that we plug in if we need it. So what we need to do is get some light above, um, but that is lower on the totem pole at the moment. So that is our table. Pretty easy to make, didn't take much effort. But it works really well and it can move around so if for instance we really need it to be you know long ways this way then we can spin it if we need to have more room to for instance get into the bookshelves then we can slide it over so that's the one nice thing about having it on the casters is that it will move all over the place so that is our big table so these are my great big uh, bookcases. These again were given to me, or not given, I, I purchased them from her, but she gave me an incredibly great price from my friend who owned a craft store. So she had these in her back room for storage. So I got these from her. They're really nice and big. Um, and up top, I keep things like my buttons. Organized by color, some corks. This is an old writing desk from the 1800s. This is how I store my, well, let me grab this one instead. So I really, if I'm gonna store something, I wanna have it, you know, kind of fun. So these are in um, old card catalogs and apothecary doors. Doors, and then what I do is I just, simple dimple, just take a piece of Card stock. This um, it's all scrap. So, um, and then I just wrap it, and then a pin to put it, keep it there. And in the nook, I have an incredibly big box. These are, you know, a, a couple of feet, a couple of yards, you know, of the trim. And then the rest of the whole roll is in a huge box in the nook. 
So this way, if I find myself that I've run out of one, I can go in there and replenish that supply. And I have it like, this is my dark white. Sorry about the spin. And then this is like really wide ones. This is my stark white. You can, when they're together, you can see the difference. And then this is the more colored. And this is just trim, so lacy trim. Ribbons and whatnot, um, I've shown in different parts of this. And um, then this is how I store my embossing folders. I have the wide embossing folders in this little box, and again, collect creatures. And this, the narrow ones in this box. And I just made both of those boxes and then covered them. So inside, we'll start on this side. Hopefully the light isn't too bad. Um, this is where I uh, store my random 12 by 12. So the 12 by 12s that are in sets are in my paper towers and the random ones are in here. And they're done by color and somewhat by theme. So for instance, these are all Christmas and then starting here, it's rainbow to the back. And then there are a couple of pads, but those are for specific projects. This is Halloween. So, so it's primarily there, you know, it's just random papers. Maybe that I used up a, most of a collection and had one or two pages left. It gets put in here. And then these, <laughs> these are my project boxes. I am one of those people who have to have a boatload of things going at one time to feel like, you know, feel normal. <laughs> so I like to have a lot of projects going. And But some of them are also ones that, um, you know, maybe I, I started something for myself. And anytime somebody else wants something or uh, I need to do something for a design team, I put the one, that one aside and go to the other one. And then some of these are f actually finished projects and I just need to go through the box and put everything away in where it belongs. And those baggies are, they're also kind of project bags. I use those to hold collections sometimes. So for instance, if I have a graphic 45 collection with a bunch of pieces, I might put them in the bag, especially when I'm working with it. Um, I find those really useful for um, putting a lot of stuff together that matches. So I use them quite a bit. What I need to do, my next plan, is to make some tags to hang off of the little zippers and then have all the zippers hanging this way. That way I can very quickly see what's in the bag. Because right now I'd have to take it out and look at it. It's a bit of annoying. Those need to change. That is um, letters and numbers stickers, but also uh, sentiments. And yeah, they're overstuffed as you can see. So that needs to be redone. Those are project books. And then down below, and you'll see this in, when I go to the other, where I keep my ephemera binders. This is my most favorite thing in terms of storage. And it's these sheets. And I'll take one out of each of them. I need to replenish that supply. But what they are is card holders. So, for instance, business card holders. Um, uh, index card holders and you can look for them online just pulling out a chair here you can look for them online for, like uh, baseball card holders uh, business card holder uh, index card holder they are listed in all kinds of ways I found a wonderful company here in Germany that has these three styles and I use them the most so one with nine sections and then four sections and then two sections 
and all of my ephemera is stored this way and I'll show you that when I get to the other bookcase really find this incredibly useful and then when I'm working on a project I can just pull out the sheets that have to do with that project and then put them into my project binder while I'm working on it um, that's just solely for the ephemera pieces things like the papers go into either a project box or a project bag depending on the type of project and the size of the papers I absolutely love these and highly recommend something like that you'll, you'll see in a minute I I love it <laughs> and on my chipboard is down there as well and then things like um, uh, manila folders and whatnot they're all down there and then this side <laughs> this is the in slightly insane side these are my ephemera binders and as you can see it goes and they want to close so they'll keep closing on me but it goes down 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 and down all the way down there two of them are I'm currently working on a project so they're pulled out so not there and then the two at the very end are empty ready to be numbered and used when I need them so what I've done is they're all numbered and you can see I um, there I do not buy new binders I only get them off of eBay or Facebook marketplace or garage sale you know I only use used binders they're perfectly all right and yeah so I've got all kinds of different colors and some of them are a little more beat up than others but put the little um, label thing here on it so I just cut and glued and um, found online a I think it was even with the sticker company there <laughs> that I got the sticker paper from um, found these numbers and boom and then what I have is I have a, my inventory and on the page you know for each binder I have a short listing of what is in that binder but off to the side I have a uh, quick you know category and so for instance I have several well here flowers the best one I think I have about five binders that is all flowers but I can look here at the type of flower ephemera that is in that particular flower binder and then so I can quickly flip to the sides and find the one that I'm looking for and then let's see let's look at the flower one so that's number two and I can pull it out and here is my flower or one of my flower ephemera um, notebooks and you can see it's all there are some of these um, for these long sticker sheets it's simply a one pocket folder with uh, then it's uh, just closed down the middle so that you can have a spot for two sticker sheets but as you can see then all of my stickers are all my ephemera um, die cuts vellum anything that fits in the world of ephemera goes in to these books and I do take the time to organize within the binder mostly <laughs> so for instance in this one it's uh, stickers with a white backing and then it moves to vellum and I kind of keep the leaves and mushrooms and whatnot um, separated from the flowers and then they're done by color sometimes rainbow sometimes just what I, whatever I had to happen in my hand at the time but and it depends on how many I have so if I have a whole lot like in my butterflies I have I think 30 some pages of a one specific butterfly ephemera piece that I got from Fabrica de Kuro all cut out and put into their little guys and I had to do that in rainbow order so that I could easily flip to the color of butterfly that I wanted so it just depends on what it is but as you can see 
there's times when I need the four. So when I have like sheets like this and then the nine, and then if I flip to the back, probably, maybe not in this one and my computer is dinging on me, but then there's times when I need the two, depending on the size of the ephemera. And so then, um, for instance, this is the sheet of really big ones that don't fit. So that's a one pocket dealy. And then oh, right in front of it is the two pocket. So this is how I keep track of my ephemera. And I used to have them in, and that guy fell out. I'm going to have to find that one, put him back in, do that later. I used to have them, first I started with baggies. And then I used the photo boxes that I now put my 3D ephemera into and finally ended with these. And this is by far the best method that I have found for me. And the way that I categorized them and put them in, what I did was I just sat and thought, okay, I have this set of ephemera. When I want to look for that piece, what would I be thinking in my head to find it? So for instance, um, if it's heart, will I think to myself heart or will I think to myself Valentine's? And I think there's a, you know, if you just have a plain little heart, you don't want to go through a whole bunch of Valentine's images to get to just a plain little heart if you're making a birthday card. So instead of putting, you know, I do have my hearts separated from my Valentine's, but there are very distinct, you know, if I look at this heart, the only thing you can think of is Valentine's, not just plain heart, if that makes sense. And so that's how I have organized mine. What am I thinking at the time when I go, okay, I want to find that. What word comes to mind? Does it say Valentine? Or does it say just heart to me? And then that's how I've categorized them and then sorted them. So, But as you can see, there's, <laughs> yeah, I might have a bit of a problem. But um, this is how I sort them and this is how I keep track of them. And it works beautifully. And I've been using this method for about three years now. And it works really well for me. So anyways, that is my binders. Hey guys, so the earlier part of this video was filmed a while ago and I mentioned in there that I was going to make some changes with a few things and so I have done that. So I thought I'd show it to you real quick. So these are my project baggies. Um, this one for instance is for a album that I'm making um, on the trip that my parents and um, me and my husband took to Scotland to go see the tattoo. So, obviously, it's <laughs> kind of been pushed into the back of, you know, get things done list. So, everything's just kind of in this baggie. So, it gives you an idea of why I use, or how I use my bags. It's just a whole bunch of little tiny things. And so, I like having them in the bag. It really keeps them secure. So that's why I don't give you an idea of between the boxes and the bags. Um, when I have a lot of little things, it's really best to have them in the bags because they're, you know, really secure. I don't have to worry about it coming out. So again, Crafty Creators in the uh, collection is a bunch of little tags. So I printed out a bunch of the tags. And they're laminated so that they're nice and secure. And that's why they're it's hard to see because it's shiny. And then I just took some of my uh, letter stickers and labeled it with a letter. And then in my little book, which I have here next to me on my desk, and is, or actually I think I, oh, no, nope, there it is. In this little book that I showed you before, I've just, uh, da, 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 here, project bags. And so they're labeled, and then I can easily see what thing. And then what I like about that is I also wrote it in pencil so I can erase it. And, you know, if the project bag changes, 
then I don't have to change this guy. I can just change this. So that's why I did that that way. Okay, and then I mentioned that I had these, uh, they were like file folder, little plastic dealios that had letters, numbers, and sentiments. They were not just bursting, they burst. So <laughs> the um, little flaps completely busted. So they were really not working anyways, but then they just completely busted. So I knew I had to change it, so I just put this around. So those two binders that were hadn't been used yet, now they got used. So like I said, you can get these um, specific protector sheets that have, if you can see, they're closed down the middle. Not completely. Um, here at the top, there is if I can get there. There is a little bit of space here where it's not and then it's closed down the middle. And these specifically that I have here are made by Identit Hearts, which is a company here in Germany. And the reason uh, you can get them here is because they make these sheets that are like this. And so, of course, they make these storage protector sheets so that you can store the sheets that they make for their stickers. These are very uh, typical around here in Germany, these little sheets like this. And I've got a several, several, several thousand of them. So they're all in here. Um, well, not all of them. So I've got them flourish ones and Christmas ones and whatnot. But these are my sentiments and whatnot. So these are labeled, are done by letters. And then what I just did, if I can oops, squish that down a bit, I just took a sticky note and put on their label. So mix and red, pink, and orange for my different letters. And so that goes through the, all the letters, and then we move to and get past all the letters, <laughs> and we go to the numbers, and of course then that goes again, all my colors and everything for the numbers, and then then there's sentiment sheets. And again, I've got them labeled for what they are. So right now, I've just got this as a sticky note on the page. But it doesn't mean I do have to flip through and see the pages. I'm not sure if I want to change that or not. Um, have some sort of label off to the side, you know, da 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 But for now, this is working for me. I don't get these out, especially, you know, the sentiments sheets. Don't get them out quite so often, mostly because most of them are German, but mostly because I don't make as many cards as I do everything else, and so you, I tend not to need the sentiment sheets for the stuff that I make, so they're, they don't get as used as often, so I don't really care at the moment that it's kind of hard to find. And then with the colors, I've got them by rainbow anyway. So it's kind of simple to just flip through to find where in the rainbow I want. So this is what I did instead of those bulging pockets. So, and the other one, the other uh, notebook or other binder that I had extra, that's uh, currently I had all of my Christmas sheets were in these other special binders that were made prior to, so I do mint tarts also have these little binders that you couldn't get specifically only for their sticker sheets. And so I had all of my Christmas ones in those little binders, but 
that was not working. They were bulging again, and um, I was running out of space in those, so took them out of those little and put them into one of these binders with these sheets. And that works much better because I can, and plus I can move them around easily. So I like that. And like, like I said, when I'm working, I can take the sheets out, leave the binder, the big, big binder. <laughs> leave the binder over on my table and just bring the sheets that I need. So, so that is the update in what I've done with those guys. Also in one of the other videos I showed you on my Rascog, I have, I've used these little bags for different materials like um, my collaging materials, manila folder stuff, that kind of thing. And I did the same thing, used these little tags and um, this is just uh, from Tim Holtz these little doodads and and but instead of like la labeling them with the letters I actually used my label maker and made labels so it has book paper blank paper manila written on it so same thing it makes it really easy to see and they hanging off the side and then I don't have to pull out the binder uh, the bags to see what's, what's in them so that's my update